Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to pick up where we left off in the last section where we talked about hyperbolic functions and their derivatives. And here we're going to talk about the inverse hyperbolic functions and their derivatives. So we're following a pattern. The beginning of the course, the beginning of the entire course, talked about the inverse trig functions and the derivatives of those. Now, the last section, we talked about the hyperbolics, and now we're going to talk about the inverse of those hyperbolics and the derivatives associated with those. So it's just another thing to file in your brain, remember on your test, so that you know how to take those derivatives, and so you know about the inverse hyperbolics. So there's no mystery here. We've already talked earlier in the class about inverse functions in, in terms of the inverse uh, trigonometric functions. Um, here it's no different. If you have the uh, hyperbolic function, hyperbolic sine of x, then its inverse will simply be a hyperbolic inverse of x. Okay, so these are opposites of one another. And if you had the cosine hyperbolic of x, its inverse would be the cosine hyperbolic inverse of x. That's what this negative 1 raised to the power here. That's not an exponent. That's not raised to an exponent. That's just the sim symbology of the, the uh, the notation that means inverse function. So what does that mean? Okay, What does this inverse thing mean? Just a little review because we covered this quite a bit in the first section when we talked about the inverse trig functions. Okay, If you had hyperbolic sine okay, of some number y and that returns some number x, you, put, you plug some number y into here, whatever it is, and you get a number x back, then what it means is that the inverse hyperbolic of x is going to equal y. So you see, they're, they're, they're kind of opposites of one another. If I have a number and I put it in the hyperbolic function and I get a number back, then if I take this number that I got back, put it into the inverse, I will get the other number back. So it's, it's exactly the same as the, the, uh, the, uh, the inverse functions we talked about with the trig functions. Exactly the same. If you go back to that, we talked about the fact that if you take a number and you put it into the sine function, you get a number back. And if you use that number and go into the inverse sine function, you'll get your original angle back. So this is really the same thing. Uh, it's just dealing with hyperbolics instead. So that's, that's just sort of a little bit of motivation here at the beginning to show you that these inverses are really exact analogs of what we talked about before when we talked about inverse trig functions. Now what we're going to do is just go ahead and I'm not going to prove them or derive them. I'm just going to write them down, uh, the derivatives of these inverse hyperbolics, and then we're going to use them to solve some problems. Okay, the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine okay, is equal to 1 over square root 1 plus x squared. Okay, the derivative of inverse cosine hyperbolic is 1 over square root x squared minus 1. Okay, so you see there's, there's already some similarity here, but they're not quite the same, obviously. Derivative with respect to x of inverse hyperbolic tangent of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. And you'll see a little bit of similarity here. The derivative with respect to x of, I'm sorry, of the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x squared. And what you notice right away is that the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic tangent is exactly the same thing as the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cotangent, which is just 1 over 1 minus x squared. Okay, so moving on, uh, the derivative 